what we're going to do now is learn how to make an adaptive part. Uh, we usually start with individual parts and then put them together uh, by constraints to make an assembly. In this case, we're going to start with the assembly we've already got so far with our puzzle and our, puzzle, our box and our puzzle cube. And we're going to make what's called an adaptive part so that we can make sure the measurements are just right. So I'm going to begin by, uh, first of all, checking to make sure what some dimensions are. I want to know for, for sure what is the distance between this plane at the top of the uh, box and the plane that would be at the top of the puzzle. And I can see I've got 0.15 inches. That's just information that will be helpful to me when I start to make my lid because of the lid design I'm going to use. So now I'm going to go back to assemble. I'm going to put a plane on the top, <coughs> excuse me, on the top of my puzzle. And um, I want to actually backtrack. No, I don't want to put the plane on the top of the puzzle. What I want to do is I want to put the plane on top of the puzzle, but offset it. I'm clicking and holding and dragging before I let go. The distance I want to make that offset is 0.15 inches. I want it to be 0.15 inches actually above, if you look at it, you can see it's above the uh, um, actual uh, part at box. So what I'm going to do now, uh, and you can also notice that I have right clicked and suppressed the puzzle cube so that it's not showing. It's actually still in the assembly, but it's not showing, so it's not in the way right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new part, and to do that, I'm going to make the lid, and I'm going to call it lid, and this will be lid 3 for me. You can just call it lid. Uh, and I'm going to say it. I have to click the plane so it knows where to place that part. And what that does for me is it opens up uh, and I, I create a sketch plane on that plane. And you can see that now I have a part that's called lid. This symbol right over here is the adaptive symbol. And it's located above the, uh, the base. What I'm going to actually do is turn it around, and I'm going to make uh, use project geometry so that I can project um, all of the uh, uh, edges of the, uh, there we go, that's what I want, all of the edges of the lid. All of this is the emboss. I'm not going to project that. Now, what I'm am going to do with this is I'm going to build uh, the design that I have come up with for my lid. So I'm going to start by using an offset and I'm going to offset this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it out. Offset just saves me a lot of time and I'm going to look back at that square and I want to know just for my information what is the dimension from the inside, come on mouse, what is the dimension from the inside to the inside of this? And I know it's going to be a driven dimension. That it means it, it, the computer already knows, the software already knows. And the same thing here. And I'm going to accept. That's just showing me the information so that I will know. What I do want to do also is I want to know dimension what the wall width will be for all the way around this. And I'm going to make that wall width of uh, 0.1. So my wall thickness for the outside will be 0.1. Now I'm going to create a rectangle that's on the inside of this. And so I'm just going to make a rectangle. And I'm going to make it... Um, on the inside here, I, ca I had cannot get it to do offset because it wants to stop when I hit this the point right here. So I have some difficulty making it do offset. What I'm going to do now is making sure that the word top is turned up correctly. 
I want to center that rectangle. So I'm going to use my vertical. Vertical means one something's on top of, uh, straight up above the other. So I'm going to make my center point here line up directly with that. And then horizontal here and here. So that squares up uh, this into the center of my box. Next thing I'm going to do is actually dimension. So I'm going to dimension from here to here, and I'm going to pull that out. I want that dimension to actually be 2.2. It needs to be smaller than the 2.3. And I will dimension from here to here. And I want that to be 2.2 as well. So what I've done is make uh, a smaller rectangle inside this. I'm going to fill it using a 0 0.05 fillet, very small. But I'll still fill it that and this and this one all the way around. And so now I have actually uh, got an outer a uh, rectangle that's filleted and an inner rectangle that's filleted. So I'm going to finish my sketch. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually extrude. I'm going to start by extruding just this very outer lip. This is going to be an outer lip. I want it to go in the other direction. I want it to go down. The distance that I'm going to choose for it to go down is... Um, 0.25 and now you can see what I've got is a lip that is actually on the outside of my uh, going on the outside of my box I'm going to hit save and that saves the lid as a separate part I could actually open it up as a separate part now I can choose return and that will take me back to my assembly. I'm not quite finished working on my lid though, so I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to double click. I'm uh, doing browser editing, it's called, because I'm working in uh, using my browser. Now, we did all that work with my sketch, um, but if I right click, like we can when we're do working in just a part, I don't have the option to actually share the sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this sketch and then I'm going to go back to uh, my part and I'm going to create a new sketch, place it on top of this, turn it back around, and now I'm going to paste. So even though I couldn't share the sketch, all of my hard work still should work. There it goes. Okay. So I right clicked and it appeared. <coughs> I'm sorry. So there is um, my sketch. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, using this very inner rectangle, I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to extrude just this very center part. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to go, and again, I want to go the other direction. I want to go down. And this time, what's new, first of all, I want to change the, I'm sorry, I want to change the depth. I saw that that depth from the top of the cube to my uh, top of my box was 0.15. So I want to extrude this 0.1 down. I don't want it to hit the top of the uh, puzzle. So I'm going to go point one down. What is new is I'm going to show you how to do a taper angle. So I'm going to taper this, and I want it to taper in. So I'm going to say negative, and I'm just going to choose a negative point, um, one five, point, not point one five, negative 15 degree angle. And I'm going to say OK. And if I zoom in, you can see that this is at a slant now. It's not straight up and down like the other stuff. Finally, I want to create another sketch on top of this. And I'm going to actually take and I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to extrude everything. I've got to go here and here and 
inside there. Did I get all of it? Let me look at the top, make sure I got everything. I did. And so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go uh, 1.5. And this time I do want it to go up. So I'm going to look at it from home. And I can see there is my actual um, height where I'm putting the top on the lid. And so it took me three extrusions, but I've got an outer extrusion, an inner extrusion, and then the top. The last thing I want to do in this is I'm going to chamfer. Chamfers like fillet in that it removes material. What it will do is instead of rounding like fillet does, it will cut an angle. There are several different types of chamfers. What we're going to use is one that will make a basically a 45-45-90 triangle where the legs of the triangle that are being cut away are congruent. And so I'm making those legs be 0.125. And I say OK. And that makes a nice little lid. I'm going to save this part. I'm going to remove that or take the visibility off of that work plane. And now I'm going to return. And now I'm going to remove the visibility from this work plane. And so you can see that makes a, a pretty nice lid. I'm going to save again and save yes for the level of detail. And it makes a pretty nice lid. And we're going to add some more to it. Uh, in the next tutorial.